Hello everyone, I'm delighted to introduce our research topic today. My name is Dayan Kim and I'm charge of algorithm research in Bistel Data Science Team. Our research topic is real-time health score application using Spark on Kubernetes. We use the Spark to compute the health score and apply it to the cloud system in manufacturing industry. In this presentation, we are going to briefly explain the, the above system and more discuss how to develop the health score application in real time. Our presentation will be in two parts. First, I will introduce our company and its prediction solution. Its name is GrandUV APM. And then Sing Chen Li will explain real-time health score application using Spark on Kubernetes. I'm going to start with the introduction of our company. Bistel is a worldwide provider of intelligent automation solutions for all manufacturing industry, such as semiconductor, vehicle, chemistry, steel, and energy. Bistel was established in August 2000 and now focuses on providing AI-based smart applications with Industry 4.0. Our headquarter is in South Korea and R&D center is in the Santa Clara in US and our regional sales branches are in Austin, China, Japan, Singapore, and Europe. This step provides analytic and automation solutions based on artificial intelligence and big data to all manufacturers. At first, this step focused on developing solutions in the, in the high-tech manufacturing such as semiconductor and display. And from now, Vistel has tried to expand our business areas into industrial manufacturing, such as automotive, steel, and energy. Generally, our solutions can be categorized into three parts, detect, analyze, and predict in the manufacturing process. This slide shows our range of current products for each category and the BISTELS more focuses on prediction analytics and adaptive intelligence for smart manufacturing. Since the last year, BISTEL has worked on developing real-time predictive analytics and its product name is GrandView APM. I will briefly introduce concept of GrandView in the following slide. For predictive analytics, let's take a look at our last product, latest product, Grand VPM. Grand VPM is an equipment health monitoring and real time prediction solution in manufacturing. Not only does it perform real time monitoring of your manufacturing set, it also tracks the performance of the asset and utilizes AI to predict the remaining useful life of the equipment. This allows the engineers to shift the maintenance strategy from the traditional method, which is either time-based or run to failure to a more intelligent and efficient data-driven strategy as known as predictive maintenance. These key features include AI modeling for detection and port prediction, and cloud-based global dashboard and predict maintenance. The novel features described in the previous, previous slide provide detailed insight to manufacturing engineers with one click away from global dashboard to as a health statistics. In here, you can see the health status of each equipment. And in asset alarm statistics, you can see alarm history and root cause of the, your alarm. And in streaming parameter statistics, 
which will be focused today, you can see all parameters and test scores on real time. Now that I've covered brief introduction of our GrandView APM, although there are a lot of functions in the GrandView APM, today we will more focus on introducing how to computerize score on real time application. Sing Charlie will explain it in the following slide. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Steve Lee working at Bistel as a software engineer. And I would like to introduce real-time health application using Spark Streaming in the following slide. So before going into the detail about the method, I would like to briefly introduce the concept used in the predictive maintenance. So what is a health score in smart manufacturing? A health score, also known as an assess score, represents a machine status as a single value. It is a core metric of the prognosis and health management system because a health score can be used to predict the machine's failure time. To compute the health score, various machine learning algorithms are used and selecting appropriate algorithm is important for accurate health score. So, how can you predict the machine's failure point by observing the health scores? Suppose that we have several parameters with values and we can identify their trends by plotting them as shown in the figure left. As you can see on the right side, in the figure left, the values are higher than others. And we can think that these are the position where mechanical problems occur. So, and the sensor data produce a normal data record. By applying some algorithm to these multiple parameters, we can come up with a single value and we can more easily identify the trend as shown in the figure right. In our application, we use the one, the, one of the deep learning models. We use the reconstruction errors, which are different between original value and reconstructed value to compute the health score. So in the following slide, I will describe how to compute the health score using Spark Streaming in real time. Since there are many functions and components used in the application, but it is very limited to introduce them or in the session due to time constraint. So therefore we will focus on the health score computation on Spark using simple prototyping application in the following slide. The following figure provides the data flow of the real health score application. There are two streams involved in this application. The first stream is the unbounded sensor data from Kafka, and the other is the event stream that is invoked based on the user section. To compute a health score, the model needs to be combined with the sensor data, and this can be achieved by calling join method or broadcasting variables. Since training a model is a very time-consuming task, so we set a separate server responsible for model construction and then communicate with the stream engine whenever the model should be updated. So this application can do many things such as summarizing statistics and generating a lot based on the time interval. In addition, we use the time series database to preserve all the data records for monitoring or calling the data record. So while the sensor data has unbounded characteristics, the model context only comes into the stream wide when the event occurs. It means that the model context should be cached somewhere to be combined with sensor data and this can be achieved by using stateful operation in Apache Spark streaming. So without the stateful operation, the application knows nothing about the previous records on these streams. As, as shown in the code right, we join the model stream with the trace stream. And also to maintain stated, 
you use the update state by key with a function which is state proporation. We can define some logics using previous state inside the function, and this can be passed to the state proportion as an argument. The example of usage of update state by key is illustrated in a figure here. As we mentioned, the model is preserved across the mini batches using state proportion. And at a certain point, in our example, the batch number three, suppose that the user click the model update button via web interface, then the training of model is performed in a separate server. And its context is sent to the stream engine to substitute the previous model with new one. And to enable this procedure, it requires the check checkpointing for storing their offset. However, as data is growing and the number of assets and its parameters are greatly increased, the previous method caused performance degrade. Considering the method is invoked on every key in this stream, if the key set becomes large, then the overall performance of the system will be very degraded. Because the method needs to iterate all the keys even if there is no incoming updates, this behavior can affect performance degrading when dealing with a large amount of keys. As mentioned in previous slide, contrast to the sensor trace stream, the model stream is always resting unless model change occurs. To avoid the unnecessary execution in the update state by key, instead we use the full outer join and the map with state function. As shown in a figure, after joining two streams, value and model, in our example, the key is the asset ID. Then there are some absent value at T1 and T2 batches. We can re replace the absent value with the model context, which is stored in the stateful space. Then we can compute a health score. We can achieve this scenario using map with state and also we can avoid the unnecessary execution of the update state by key when a large amount of assets are given. So I have a short demo. So this is our simple real-time health score application for the demo budget. So as you can see, there are two topics here. First one is the trace topic, which received the series of sensor data record. And the other is a model topic, which you receive an event-based data. So as I mentioned before, we use the full outer join to combine two different streams, which are trace and the model stream. And this join method produced the data record, which contained the trace without model context for most batches. This is because the model data context is event-driven type and it comes only when the user action occurs. So for this reason, we use the map with state function to substitute the previous model with MT1 for computing health score. So when we look into the method of map with state function, we can see three parameters. So which are the key and the current model and the cache model, which are the stateful variables. We can preserve any variable using these third parameters and compare it to the current one as to whether it should be updated or not. So in our simple example, we can check, the, check whether the cache is empty or not. And in case the cache is not empty, then we get the preserved model and return it with current stress data for computing health score. So let's start this simple real-time health score application in the standard mode. Before starting this app, I want to send this score record to the output Kafka topic. So the result will be sent to the Kafka 
to pick and run this application. So it waits for receiving the data from Kafka sources. And I already generate the simulated data set and send them to the Kafka sources. So we should start the data generator to send the data to the real time application. And after that, we can see the asset ID and their hash score in real time in the console below. So in addition, using the time series database, we can see the trends of the hash score in the web tool, such as Grafana. The hash score indicates the machine status, so that we can reference the machine's condition based on the, this value in real time. And normally we run the simple real time application in the standalone mode, as I show you because it is very easy to set up and manage their resources. However, when dealing with large data set, there are some challenges in standalone mode in predictive maintenance. So we test them with two cases, where the first case is very small number of assets and parameters, and the other case has a large number. In the case one, there is no scheduling delay for processing data records. The scheduling delay indicates the time a batch waits in a queue for the processing of previous batches to finish. However, the number of assets and its parameter becomes larger. We can notice that the scheduling delay and its processing time is increased at the same time, as shown in a figure below. So as shown in a figure left, we can see that there are lots of records waiting to be processed. It indicates that the system is not able to process the batches as fast they are being generated, and eventually it is falling behind. So in this case, a certain way to resolve this issue is to expand the system into multi-cluster mode. Compared to the standalone mode, more resources can be utilized by adding more nodes, and we set up the 12 nodes using our private cloud server in our company. So when running the application in multi clusters, there are some considerations. In our system, the key is the asset ID, which means the data record with same asset ID are assigned into the same node. Therefore, we need to be careful to use join or group by key method, which invokes the shuffling between nodes. And note that there is no broadcast operation provided in the this stream, so it is recommended to convert the RDD into data frame or structural streaming. In addition, time sequence is important to pinpoint the failure time of the machines. Therefore, ordering the sensor data record in a time sequence is very important. So from now, um, we have developed a simple real-time application and expanded it to multi-clusters. And then we apply it to the Kubernetes for containerized application. So have you ever installed the Hadoop and Apache Spark in multi-node on your own? then it would be very laborious task, which it takes a lot of time. It invokes downloading, editing the Java file, and checking the network, which would be very painful work. Some open sources are used to help above issues, but it, it is still troublesome. So for this reason, Docker, the container-based application is popular because it enables easy delivery and deployment of the software. Nowadays, Docker is the de facto standard to build and share containerized app. A container, container is a process that is isolated from other processes. We can bundle related modules together and containerize them using Docker command for easy deployment. By doing above concept, we can avoid the repetitive repetitive work for every worker node. 
So KubeNet is an open source orchestration software that provides an API to control how and where those containers will run. Since it is not easy to manage multi-cluster using Docker command, KubeNet helps us to tackle some of the operating complexities when moving to scale multiple containers on or deploy across multi-servers. As you know, there is Docker Swarm that is also managing multiple containers, but it is very limited operations. So Kubernetes is regarded as a promising orchestration software. So we apply the Kubernetes to the Spark stream for easy deployment. In Kubernetes, a pod is the smallest execution unit. If a pod fails, Kubernetes can automatically create a new replica of the pod to continue operation. When submitting the Spark job, an application with all its dependencies is submitted to the Kubernetes cluster. The master of the cluster acts as a cluster manage, manager and creates the driver pod. This port then initiates the application and requests the cluster manager to create its future port. Therefore, in each executor port, the application calls are executed. So let's install on Kubernetes on multi node using our private cloud node. So in this demo, I would like to set up the Kubernetes and start the Spark job on Kubernetes. So let's check the, our cloud IP address and we can see that our comfort IP address and we command the Kubernetes admin to initiate the Kubernetes servers by specifying the, the server's address. It takes time to install the relative package and so we found that the bootstrap tokens for establishing connection between a node. And so copy this command to set the configuration and give permission to the user to access the Kubernetes server. And we can identify the Kubernetes cluster information and you can see the Kubernetes master is running in this address. So when you run pod, they will be allocated at IP addresses from the pod network. So you, we use the kube Flannel to configure the Kubernetes network. So let me type. And so we confirm the network is fine. And let's go back to the worker node and try to join the Kubernetes using the token we have. So we change the root user. And it is connecting to the Bootstrap Kubernetes server and yes, it is connected. So let's go back to the master node and you can see the Kubernetes clusters and then let's see the node. Then we can identify there are two nodes are ready for job and there is no Pod because there are no running any job in this Kubernetes server. So we confirm that the Kubernetes is set up on our private cloud and it is just only two nodes, but it is easily scalable using the Kubernetes command. Then we download the latest Apache Spark version to run our application. So it takes a lot of time.
we download the latest version 3 Apache Spark. And then unzip the file and let's run the Spark Summit to run the code. So let's open the VI editor and specifying the necessary config for run the Spark job. So since it takes time, so I've done it already and paste them into VI editor. So you can find the container image, which is trying to download the container from the Docker Hub. And also we specify the instance for four for executors, and this is the main class of our application. So the our Kubernetes master IP address is specified here. And finally, the location of the jar file in the container is also indicated. So everything is fine and start the script. Uh, so there is no account. So let me make the service account name Spark and then start again. Then you can see that we download the containers from the Docker Hub and there is running Spark job on Kubernetes. So let me check the pod on the Kubernetes. So we can see there are five pods running on Kubernetes and one is driver and remaining is executors. So let me see one of the executors and let's see the full log that the Spark job is running on the Kubernetes. So in this way, we can containerize all the application and run them using the Kubernetes. It is very easy and more scalable and it doesn't take time too much as I shown here compared to the setting or the Hadoop and Spark on your own. So from now, we introduce the prototyping version of real-time has application on Kubernetes. So due to the time constraint, we cannot cover all the detailed components of the grand views, but if you are interested in the grand view, feel free to contact our company. And thank you very much for listening to my presentation.